Hello everyone, it's The Preacher coming at you today with my newest episode of Answering Atheism. This episode is about morality, and more specifically, is there one? So, or is there absolutes in morality? So, the idea comes from a pushed philosophy called moral relativ relativism. Sorry for the mispronunciation there. But, um, the whole idea of moral relativism is the idea that morals like right and wrong is decided culturally or more specifically individually and it's pushed by many people nowadays in the modern society so i like to talk about this because this is a idea held by several atheists that i have known and met people online you know it's a idea pushed by many humanists so why is this idea not only wrong but harmful you see, the idea is pretty dangerous because it reduces good and bad down to a personal opinion. Like, uh, you enjoy helping people while I enjoy killing people. You know, and personal opinion-wise, I'm okay because in my eyes, that's morally correct. And, uh, as a moral rel if you believe in moral relativism, then you can't tell me that I am wrong. You can't judge me on it. You can't tell me that killing people is wrong or that I should stop killing people because that requires some sort of absolute. And this uh, comes down to this idea of is if everything is right, then everything is right. I don't know that sounds redundant, but you know, people say, you know, everything's right, it's just a personal opinion. Like does that like that lets off the hook like Stalin, Hitler, you know, that lets off every shooter on the planet in the history because when it comes down to personal opinion, they were okay in their own eyes. So, um so this idea is dangerous also because it is it l does not allow for fairness, basically. That like even what Hitler did in his personal opinion, it was right, but also we can't judge him on it, and we can't, you know, persecute him on it, because if moral relativism is right, then what he did is right. It literally is right. If it is okay in his own eyes, then it's right as a whole, and you can't judge him on that at all. And also, it's, uh, it's also very, thing it's very dangerous, because there is no absolutes about tolerance, and this is what's pushed by, uh, this idea is also pushed along more relativism. It's like if everyone has their own personal opinions, if everyone has their own personal beliefs, then why not just accept everyone's beliefs and we'll just coexist and be okay with everyone else's opinions being their own. But this, the whole thing about more relativism is that there is no idea of tolerance that's automatically connected to it. That if I believe what is right and what's wrong, then I can believe it's right for, to push my opinion on everyone else. So. I can personally believe that tolerance is the worst thing ever, and not be tolerant at all, and I'd still be okay, you know, I could be the most racist, misogynist person on the planet, and I'd still be okay by moral relativism reasons. So, um, part two of this idea is, um, it's the idea of the reaction, that many people like to say they are more relativist, because they want to act like that way. They want to lie and cheat and steal and be not held wrong for it. They, that they want to do what they want, when they want, and not be held accountable for it. However, when someone, re when someone does that to them, they react as if there's absolutes. For example, uh, many people can say that they are more relativists, but when they go home and find their wife cheating on them, they're going to be very unhappy. Why? Because there's absolutes they feel, that they feel that his wife should not have done that. Although, in her eyes, what it, what she did was perfectly okay, and in thus, it was okay by moral relativist standards. So, people can act like they believe this, but people react like there's some absolute morals that we stand by, which we do. It's the consciousness. You know, we have absolute morals built into us. So, many people try to explain this way by, like, evolutionary instincts. But that still doesn't explain a lot of things, like why we still get, why we jump into wars. You know, many times wars cost a lot of money. You know, the Civil War, for example, that we lost a ton of money 
fighting the Civil War and rebuilding after the Civil War, that we we would have been perfectly okay if we let the South split and, you know, just let it happen. But there was more reasons why we fought the Civil War. Of course, there was economic reasons, but a big portion of it was also the idea of slavery and trying to fight them over that. You know, there's been people who... Okay. Well, there's been people who uh, try to do something immoral and we automatically have this reaction of fighting against it that we you know we should that these ideas of absolute morals that it's in us you know evolution can't explain them all you know why do we still get into wars that if they don't help us at all you know why do we why do we frown upon vape if it's just trying to pass on genetic information like this idea of why we have absolute morals can should be traced back to something more of a higher power that there has to be something above that there has to be something above that to determine it you know there has to be someone above this level of morality to understand it all and to be able to put in our hearts what's right and what's wrong so um i guess that's all i have for this main point I'm just looking at the time on the camera, guys, sorry. I just want to see how much time I have for part two of this, which is God and evil. Well, you see, a big reason why moral relativism is pushed by many atheists, it's the idea that because evil exists and God is good, then that leaves three options, that God is evil and doesn't care about it, or God is too weak to deal with the evil, or God just doesn't exist. And in thus, many people take the third road. However, this oftentimes is kind of missing a lot of things. And here's why. This is a, one of the biggest arguments people make against the idea of God, against religion, is if God is good, why does evil exist? So I give you this. First off, um, if you believe in moral relativism or you believe in there is no God, then you can't argue this point anyways. You know, saying why is it good if God exists, like why is it evil if a good God exists, you know, that presupposes God because, you know, you can't say evil is evil and good is good if you believe everything is personal opinion. So um, that's one thing. So just saying if God is good, why does evil exist presupposes God, because if there is no God, there wouldn't be evil. There wouldn't be the idea of evil. So, um, so right away we have this idea of, this idea of we think that we know exactly what evil is in the long run. I know that sounds a little confusing, but think of it like that. There's been a lot of things that has been seen as evil at that like that one moment that it happens but in later on has helped in the long run so uh for example a big one that people use is 9-11 you know 9-11 was a horrible awful thing but right away god could not god would not stop the terrorists from doing that because free will is up to us that god gave us free will to choose what we want to do and how to do it now what we do with that free will is up to us and we have to deal with the consequences of free will eventually, both in this life, in human punishment, and in the afterlife, if you believe in that. So right away, they have free will. We have free will to do good and bad. So the people who flew the planes in the 9-11, uh, flew the planes in the World Trade Centers, they, they had the free will to do that. And they will probably have to pay the punishment for that. But there were good things that came from this. The idea of we, because of that, we started fighting against terrorism, both as a country and as a whole, like as a whole species, as a whole, as a country, we fought against it in the world at large. You know, we started being more stricter on terrorism. And this has saved hundreds of thousands of lives, if not millions, because the people that we have taken down in the fight against terrorism was killing their own people. And before 9-11, we didn't really care because we were a very opulent, very self-centered nation. 9-11 happened, and we suddenly started seeing things in a dump of light. We started seeing it as perhaps we should actually fight against this. You know, perhaps we should actually go out and try to stop this from happening to other people. So saying that 
this is evil and then thus God is not good just supposes that the evil outweighs the good in this situation. And although 9-11 is horrible and was horrible evil that day, you know, who's to say that in the long run more good did not get caused from 9-11 than bad? I know that sounds strange and many people are going to be unhappy with me saying that, but it's very true that there's been a lot of horrible, evil things that happen on this planet that results in mostly good things later on. The French Revolution, you know, the French Revolution happened and there was a lot of slaughtering, there's a lot of killing, injustice, you know, and yet because of that we paved a way, you know, the France helped pave a way for European nations to become a more democratic, more fair, more more morally sound place you know in the long run because of the french revolution because of all that evil you know europe as a whole got helped now many people would say that's probably a cop-out because i can't prove that well that may be true but well no it's not true that it's a cop-out it's true that i can't prove that everything is good in the long run but once again like saying saying that evil is only evil you know like saying that evil should be stopped right away right this second is also harmful because it does take away this idea of one free will but also takes away the idea of moral standards and i know that sounds odd but think of it like right now that um if god takes away everything that is evil if there was a god if if you believe there's a god and he takes away everything that's evil right now that includes you. That you are not a good person. No matter who you are, you've lied, you've cheated, you've stole, you've, you know, you've done horrible, awful things in your life. Now, you may not believe that, but you have. You've lied, you've cheated, you've stolen stuff, and that, that makes you a lying, cheating thief. So, if God was to stop all evil right this second, right now, he would end us stopping you from living. You know, you would, you would not exist anymore. And God in his mercy gives us time to choose our own paths that we have the time to decide him over evil that we have time to decide him over anything else and in thus him not destroying evil right now helps in the long run because more people can go to him more people can see him for what he is you know more people can come to god in this time and uh thirdly if he um if there was no idea of evil, if uh, if all evil was stopped, we would never have this idea of overcoming it. You know, as I've heard before, no one's learned a lesson from pleasure. Uh, no one's learned a lesson from pleasure. So, uh, you know, we don't have, we wouldn't have the idea of courage if there was nothing to be courageous over. You know, we would not see, like, we would not see courageous people as courageous because they would never have to deal with anything. That, you know, we wouldn't see persistence if there wasn't, like, evil obstacles in the way that we have to fight through. That the presence of evil allows us to fight against evil, will allow us to overcome this and to come to, like, a new understanding of right and wrong and why God is right and why evil is wrong and why the devil is wrong. Now, um, to many atheists, I probably already lost to you. It doesn't matter. Just the main point here is the idea of if God destroyed evil right now, that would mean destroying all humans because we're all bad in some way. So, um, and not destroying evil right now would give more people more time to come to him and, and would not come to him. You know, many people complain that if God is good, there wouldn't be any bad afterlife there wouldn't be you know a hell or eternal damnation however you know if god made everyone come to him it wouldn't be free will anymore the people who would come to him would only do it by demand and nothing else you see we should love god by our po uh, by our choice and free will alone and so when we decide to not go to him then it's our choice to go to hell you know, he does not send anyone, he does not, like, demand anyone go to hell. He sends those who willingly chose to not go with God. You know, like, even atheists, I have seen many atheists who are atheists just for the sheer fact that they want to be atheists, that they don't want there to be a God. 
And so this kind of, <clears throat> sorry, it kind of puts us in this boat that if you believe evil proves God wrong, then you're missing like a big point that he would, that he would like wipe out you. You know, he would, we would never have anything to stand against. That we as humans would never grow as a people. That we as individuals would never grow as a people. And, you know, the good things from evil would never happen. You know, many people would die over and over in many other countries because 9-11 didn't happen. So I guess that's it for today. Uh, you know, leave a comment if you have something to ask or say. Um, <clears throat> so until the next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Come back for more. See ya.